This is an ultra human ring air and it's touted as the world's lightest smart ring. Today I'm going to dive into what exactly this thing is, what it does, if it's useful for bike packing, what I like and don't like, how it's held up to abuse, and if I think it's worth slipping one on your finger. By the way, if we haven't met yet, I'm Alan aka Dirty Teeth, nice to meet you. So here's the scoop. After wearing the same wedding band for almost 19 years without fail, I messed up and lost it at work a few months ago. I was filming Horizon 2 in St. George, Utah, and we were shooting a scene in a river. I was wearing some waders moving around camera gear and my ring must have fallen off my finger in the water. I'm not sure how long it was missing before I noticed it was gone, but by the time we were done with the scene and the water had cleared up from being super murky and I could actually look, the searching was futile and I eventually had to get out and move on with the day. It was heartbreaking, I had to tell my wife, we were both super bummed. But it is what it is, and after hemming and hawing about how best to replace my wedding ring and how much it was going to cost, I started looking into smart rings. I figured if I could get some benefits, like some health insights, from a ring that looked nice enough to double as a wedding band, that could be the ticket. I don't like watches, I haven't worn one since I was a teenager. So I figured this could act like an Apple watch, or a Garmin watch, or a whoop strap on my finger. And I've read that fingers provide more accurate data than the wrist due to higher blood flow. Not to mention the Ring Air, which I obviously wound up getting, is 11 times lighter than your typical smartwatch. And that has a Find My Ring feature, kind of like Apple's Find My Phone. This adds a little bit of peace of mind in case I lose my ring again, although I don't think it would help too much if I dropped it in a river again. Long story short, I've been wearing it pretty much full time for the last few months, I even kept it on throughout the treacherous Colorado Trail bikepacking race to see how it would perform, so let's geek out. A major selling point of the Ring Air is it doesn't require any recurring monthly subscriptions or membership costs like some of the other competitors out there. <coughs> the Ring Air is currently priced at $349 and you have lifetime access to all your data so no strings attached. The Ring itself is offered in 5 classy finishes. Black, matte gray, gold, silver, and the one I went with, raw titanium, which most closely matches the wedding band I was replacing. Regardless of the finish, the outer shell of all the rings are made of high grade titanium reinforced with a tungsten carbide carbon coating so it's ready to handle everyday wear and tear. Although they do recommend taking it off while you're at the gym lifting weights so you don't scratch it up on dumbbells and that sort of stuff. The brains on the inside of the ring are coated with a medical grade hypoallergenic epoxy resin. This makes it smooth and comfy to wear around the clock and your finger won't turn green. It's also waterproof up to 100 meters, although they don't recommend submerging it for more than 12 hours at a time. <laughs> that definitely won't be an issue with me and I even tend to take mine off in the shower just because. It runs off a rechargeable, non-replaceable lithium polymer battery. Like everything these days, there's an ultra human app, it's compatible with iPhones and Android devices, and the ring transfers data and updates its firmware via a low energy Bluetooth connection. Somehow they've built in all kinds of sensors on this thing. It has a six axis motion sensor, a heart rate sensor, an oxygen saturation sensor, and it can even track your skin temperature. But in order for everything to work properly and gather accurate readings, the ring has to fit you just right. So before they ship your actual ring, Ultra Human sends out a sizing kit. They've got some instructions, but in a nutshell, you simply try different sizes until you find the ring that fits best. Then you wear it for a couple of days to make sure it's not too tight or too loose as your finger naturally expands and contracts throughout the day and while you sleep. For me, the size 8 wound up being perfect for my ring finger. A cool and unexpected bonus is that my sizing ring has now become my backup ring. It obviously fits perfectly, it's super comfy, and it's a stylish matte black. When I'm at work or in other scenarios where I don't want to wear my nice ring, I just take this one off, throw this one on, and I'm not worrying about losing or damaging the real ring. Anywho, once you're happy with your sizing, you let Ultra Human know, and then they send you the real deal. I totally forgot I ordered it and when the package came in the mail, at first I thought my wife ordered something from Apple and I was getting ready to grill her about it. Then I realized what was behind the stylish presentation and I quickly popped it open like a kid at Christmas. Inside the box, the contents are pretty simple. There's the ring itself, a charger, and a USB Type-C charging cable. But you need to supply your own charging power block, of which I have plenty lying around, so no biggie there. 
The charging unit is specifically sized for your ring and you slip your ring on and off it when you're low on juice, super simps. It may seem like nothing, but I was impressed by the high quality braided USB cable that it came with and it's about three feet or one meter long. Much better than the cheapy short cables that most electronics come with these days. The first thing I did was slip it on my finger to make sure it fit. I was really nervous that it would wind up being too tight or something and I'd have to exchange it. But sure enough, it felt exactly like the sizing ring. I also couldn't believe how light and thin it actually is. It's only about two and a half millimeters thick and weighs only three grams. It's insane how much tech is crammed into this little thing and I don't even feel it on my finger. Once I was happy with the fit and I knew it would work, I tossed it on the charger. It lights up purple when not in use, flashes white while it's charging, and turns solid green when it's topped off. While the ring was charging, I downloaded the app and cruised through the setup process, which is easy and intuitive. It detected the ring, I paired it to my phone with my Google account, plugged in my height, weight, age, and gender, and I was off to the races. Before I knew it, the ring was fully charged, and I put it on to let the data tracking begin. FYI, they say it lasts up to six days on a full charge. Spoiler alert, I've been averaging more like four, which is still pretty impressive for a battery that tiny. And it takes about an hour and a half for the ring to charge from zero to 100%, although I rarely let it go that low. Once you drop to 30%, the app lets you know, and again at 20%, and so on. And according to Ultra Human, you should anticipate 500 charging cycles before noticing any significant decline in battery performance. Anyway, once you put the ring on, it starts tracking real-time info. But there is a calibration period that can last around two weeks for the algorithms to gain enough information about sleep and recovery patterns, so you've gotta be patient. After the getting to know you period is up, all of the features and insights are unlocked. So what are the features and insights of the ring? There's a pretty long list, so I'll quickly jam through all the bullet points. But the Ultra Human website goes into depth on everything if you wanna do more research. And they've got a helpful chart that shows how they stack up to their main competition, the Aura Ring, Whoop Strap, and Garmin watches. The Ring Air tracks all kinds of metrics like heart rate, resting heart rate, HRV, skin temperature, and SpO2. It uses this data to offer real-time feedback designed to guide you towards making healthier daily decisions. The Ring also uses these metrics to understand patterns in your sleep, movement frequency, and recovery, and then it offers up ways to improve weaker areas in your day-to-day -day life. Since I tend to battle insomnia, one of my favorite uses for the ring is sleep tracking. It was also fun to review the data from bikepacking the Colorado Trail Race to compare my sleep quality from the nights bivvying out versus staying at a hotel and all that geeky stuff. Anyway, the ring calculates sleep cycles and stages like light sleep, deep sleep, and REM. It also tells you if you've been tossing and turning, lying awake, what your ideal amount of sleep should be, and if you've been hitting that target or if you're in deficit. It also helps you develop better sleep patterns by letting you know when you should stop drinking caffeine or limit screen time and what time window best suits you for optimal sleep. One thing that's cool is it tracks your heart rate drop, which is how long it takes for you to reach your resting heart rate once you fall asleep. This has been a pretty insightful metric for me. I've noticed that on nights my heart rate drops quicker, I usually get better overall sleep quality, and then I'm better rested and tend to do better tackling tougher workouts or bike rides the next day. Pretty cool stuff. Every day the ring analyzes all your sleep tracking data and then it delivers a sleep score. It factors this in along with physical stress indicators, heart rate variability, and skin temperature to offer you a recovery score each day. This helps clue you into how well rested you are and how willing your body is to tolerate vigorous training or exercise. To help optimize your recovery and overall health further, you can download additional features or what Ultra Human calls power plugins to gain even more insight. There's a bunch of basic ones. Uh, some of them that I think are pretty cool are recommending caffeine windows, ideal vitamin D and sun exposure, and circadian rhythm, and those are free of charge. Then there's also more complex power plugins that cost you money. An example of this is AFib detection that monitors your heart rhythm while you sleep and they're updating and releasing new stuff all the time. It also tracks basic movement metrics like step count and calories burned and even VO2 max. Honestly, this stuff isn't too important to me since I already track my training and my workouts 
with a chest strap heart rate monitor and I use a power meter, which is obviously more accurate and specific to cycling. But I do have to say it was pretty insightful learning how many steps per day I was hiking slash pushing my bike on the Colorado trail race in addition to how much I was riding. I didn't think about this beforehand, but after the fact, it was a pretty cool metric to have. It kind of blew my mind to learn I was averaging 30 to 35,000 steps per day mixed into the riding. I knew there was a lot of hike a bike, but yeah, that was insightful. Another feature I found useful and I want to keep exploring more is breath work. It helps me wind down and relax before bed, and in the morning, it helps get the day going. There's a bunch of different breathing exercises or protocols to choose from depending on what your goals are. You can also track your workouts directly through the Rings app and it can integrate with Strava, Apple Health, Garmin, Fitbit, etc. I haven't used this feature since, as I mentioned, I already use cycling specific devices with a power meter and more accurate chest strap heart rate monitor, but I'm sure it could definitely be a benefit to some of you out there. Okie dokie. This little guy seems pretty impressive on paper, but now that I've beaten it up for a few months, here's my takeaway and some stuff I've learned along the way. First off, I love the feel of the ring itself. The smooth inner shell slips off and on my finger easily. It's so light that sometimes I forget I'm wearing a ring at all, much less a powerful little smart device until the app reminds me it's time to charge it. As for the outer shell, I can only speak for the raw titanium finish that I have, but it hides scuffs and marks pretty well. And considering my active lifestyle and how much cycling I do and just outdoor stuff in general, I'm stoked with how well the ring has been holding up. I've forgotten to take it off and done plenty of bike mechanic work with it, gardening, raking, and random chores around the house, and it still looks great and functions perfectly as far as I can tell. I've done plenty of air travel as well. I'd say I've taken at least 10 flights with the ring on. If you're curious, I've made it through security without issue every time and I haven't had to take it off or put it in a bin or run it through the scanner. I beat it up for six days straight on one of the toughest bikepacking routes in the world and it performed like a champ. As I already said, I got some interesting data with my step count on the Colorado Trail. It also confirmed that my REM and deep sleep percentages were higher on the nights I slept in hotels, which means those nights were more restorative and promoted better recovery. And it's no surprise I performed stronger on the days after those nights of quality sleep. It's funny, the Ultra Human app actually detected a potential fever on my last night of the race. It was after my biggest day of riding and I was super diminished with only three hours and 45 minutes of sleep and it told me, your temperature seems elevated today. You might want to rest it out. <laughs> okay, I don't know about you, but it made me laugh that I'm wearing this ring that's telling me, dude, you gotta stop and take care of yourself, take a day off. Meanwhile, I'm ecstatic that I'm on the last day and I'm about to reach the finish line and nothing's gonna stop me. There's no way I'm gonna listen to a ring. So yeah, it's totally not necessary to have during bikepacking races, but if you're data-driven and you wanna nerd out on all the metrics, it is cool to have especially on something like the CTR, where you're trying to figure out how well or how poorly you're adapting to altitude and all that. Along with my step count and pathetic sleep score data, my resting heart rate was pretty insightful. At home, it's usually around 48 to 49, and on the first few nights of the CTR, it jumped way up to 72 to 73. This shows just how much the elevation was actually affecting me. By the time I got towards the end of the race, it was back down towards 50, and when the race was over and I was recovering in Littleton, it got down to 47. My recovery score throughout the CTR gave me a pretty good laugh. As you'd expect, it was super low with warnings of elevated heart rate and dipped HRV and skin temp and my sleep index needing attention. Again, this is all common sense and I don't need a smart device to tell me the obvious, but it's still fun to look at and get confirming feedback. On that note, it seems that most of the data from the ring seems to be pretty consistent and accurate across the board, except for the recovery score. And this is for the whole time I've been using the ring, not just on the Colorado Trail. I've had plenty of days where I feel great on the bike and I crush my workouts and even set PRs with a poor recovery score and vice versa. To be fair, I've heard similar critiques of whip straps and smartwatches. So it appears to be an issue with all smart devices, not just mine, when they're trying to assess optimal recovery. So I just take my recovery score with a grain of salt and I don't let it deter me from getting after it if my body's sending me different signals. 
and I don't get bummed either if I'm supposed to be all strong and super recovered and then my body disagrees. So that's my take on the Ultra Human Ring Air and all of its many uses from the point of view of a cyclist slash fitness junkie, data curious bikepacking nerd. There's so much technology crammed into this little thing and I haven't even begun tapping into all of it. But the big question is, would I invest 350 bucks in this ring or put it high on my priority list had I not lost my wedding band and been on the search for a replacement? Honestly, I'm not sure I would have. But now that I have one, I'm glad I do, and I'll definitely continue to use it as long as it stays free for monthly charges, that would be a deal breaker for me. I've given it a really good licking, and it's still ticking, and it hasn't skipped a beat since I've started wearing it. The biggest benefit I've noticed is that it helps keep me accountable. It nudges me to build better habits by paying closer attention to things like screen time, quality sleep, and ultimately better recovery. Anyway, I hope I've given you some food for thought. So please leave your thoughts down below and click like if you found this video useful and all that jazz. And if you're using a ring air or something similar, please share your insights and critiques as well so we can all learn together. As always, thanks for hanging out until the end. And until next time, ride bikes, give back, pay it forward. Thanks so much for squeezing dirty teeth into your busy schedule. Please help us reach more people and ensure you receive new videos by giving this video a like, subscribing to the channel, and clicking the notification bell. Until next time, ride bikes, give back, pay it forward.